Hi everybody from Jack <laughs> and little Denver, the sweet boy. Um, I'm going to change him. So let me see about getting you here on the stand. I'm going to change him into uh, this onesie that I've got from Ashley at Baby Love Heart Smith. I one of her Instagram sales and I haven't put it on a baby yet. Excuse me, Jackie. Thank you. Oh, I think he's feeling maybe trapped. Oh, he got out. I haven't put it on a baby yet and for whatever reason I have always envisioned it on a boy. So I'm going to do that. But I'll take this um, little top off here off of this bouncer for him. I also had kind of like a question comment from somebody that I thought was relevant and I wanted to kind of address it. Um, for everybody. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so this little guy, I'm going to sit here, baby Jack. This little guy is going to get into this outfit. We're going to see... How it, how it all matches up. I think I'm gonna leave the socks out because they're a little off white. So this um, bodysuit, it's a size one to two months. It's gonna be a little loose on him, but it is from Polarn Pirette of Sweden. And it has this really cute mouse with the circus balloon. And some hand mitts, some white hand mitts and white booties for him. It's chilly outside. It's pretty warm in here, but you can still feel it. Plus, I've been outside, so. He's been in this this little Kate Quinn bodysuit. Um, and I like it okay. It's I think it needs to soften up a little bit before I'll really like the fit on him. But, but I love the paper cranes. That's the pattern. So the question that somebody asked um, was on my video with my Ava that had been lost for four and a half months. And she said, so what, what happened? Did the seller refund you? And if so, then are you sending the doll back? Like, what are you doing? Cause it seems, you know, she felt bad for the seller then to be out the money and the doll and all of that. And that was an excellent question. And, um, so, no, she, she did not refund my money. Um, the doll came. Um, and so we never really had to address it. But the, the missing shipment really wasn't at the fault of the seller either. You know, it was neither of our fault. So it, that is a very tough situation. You know, you can't. I don't think expect, I don't, let me just speak for myself. I wouldn't expect the seller to give me my money back um, unless they had insurance on the shipment. So I'll get to that in a second. But um, what she did say was she came to me and said, I will make you another Ava. Don't worry if this doll doesn't show up. You know, she said, I, I can send you your money back, but it's going to take me a couple of months because obviously, you know, that money is spent, you know, sold the product, the money is spent. And I was like, I don't want you to do that. Um, she said, I will make you a new Ava if I need to, but we never needed to because eventually the doll showed up. Now, um, do I think that she had to make me another doll? No, I definitely don't. And I'm in the same situation right now with my Benjamin, who has been in New York since August 30th. And you guys are not crying about it. A lot of collectors are experiencing this. A lot of artists are um, struggling through this with their work being out there and their customers, you know, nervous and all of that. So it's not unique to me. And I've already accepted the risk and I already am, you know, if that doll never shows up, 
you know, that money's already spent. You know, I've moved on. It's not great, but um, I didn't use my rent money to buy him, so it's okay. But, uh, no, it's not her, it wouldn't be her responsibility to do either. I think that it's a really good business gesture, like a nice business gesture. Um, and, you know, on the one hand, it's costing them the kit. I had provided the first kit. So it's costing them the cost of the kit, their time, and the materials to make the doll. But on the other hand, it's really costing them more than that because it's costing them the, the money that they would make selling that second doll to somebody else. So let's say, you know, just to use a round number, let's just say somebody sold you a doll for a thousand bucks. And if they make you a free doll to replace the doll that's lost, that's a thousand bucks that they're not getting from another person. So it is the same impact as a refund, honestly, unless you provide the kit. If you provide the kit, then it's not really money that they had factored in other than it's time not spent on a new customer. Oh my gosh, do I love him. Holy smokes. I'm going to have to pause and get some pictures while I still have some light. I might not, I'm not even going to do the hand mitts because of the mittens that are built in here. So insurance. So this, and by the way, this whole topic of insurance and lost dolls and all of this, um, I know that this is, was covered. I know Katie did a video not too long ago about this, um, using another real world example of somebody else who was going, having this situation, was posting about it on Facebook with a lost doll. She had her own lost doll. I'm pretty sure Inez did a video on this as well, um, or a live. I can't remember exactly, but it, it's been talked about. But um, but because I was asked a specific question, I'll, I'll um, through those videos, I learned that, and through talking to the artist, that there is no, um, I learned this from Daria first, and then from Anastasia, and from the videos, that there's no insurance option when you're sending like EMS, postal service from Russia. They don't allow them to insure the goods. So they have to send by courier. And the courier was is about three or four hundred dollars. Now, both of those artists build the cost of shipping into the doll price. So it's basically it's free shipping, but it's built into the price of the purchase. So they would either have to jack up the price or charge separately for shipping. But then you get a faster delivery and you do have the option of adding insurance. And um, I remember Katie pointed this out. It's really important, especially if it's not from an artist and it's from a seller, that you specifically ask about insurance. And if you want insurance, you know, usually that's going to be extra from um, certainly from a secondhand seller, from another collector. I think the next doll that I buy from Russia, I'm gonna, I'm going to really insist on paying the few extra hundred bucks for a courier at this point. Um, I probably will. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but so with my missing Benjamin, this our Anastasia Gangalo has been absolutely phenomenal with raising this issue up with her, um, with the, with the postal service in Russia and getting them involved. And, um, they've reached out to the U S the international USPS office who's contacted me. Look, the doll has been sitting in the sorting center in Jamaica, New York, since August 30th. It's not missing unless it's been stolen. It's just probably in a container amongst oodles of containers that are full of packages and um, they're just sifting through stuff and uh, that's the way it is. But I would not expect I would not expect the artist to take on that liability unless they have an insurance option. You're under the impression that you're, they're insuring the doll and then they don't pay for the insurance. That's a different conversation to be had. But um, yes, thank you for being concerned about the seller. That is definitely a valid uh, concern. And that's the situation. I'm going to pause you. I'm going to come back on in a minute here 
because um, I want to put my two new babies together, but I want to get some pictures of this guy. Okay. We did a couple of pictures. I am going to, I just want to put the two of them together for just a minute. I had to put the light on anyway, because even um, with, with the light that I had left, the, and I think even now still, the pictures are just blurry. It's annoying. It's really annoying. Just trying to make room for his sister. I just am so happy to have brought these babies home and I just haven't put them together yet. Come here, Miss May. I'm really getting into keeping, you know, certain babies displayed and kind of rotating them out. Like I'm just really loving my dolls and my collection so much more right now than I have in a little bit. Look at them. Oh my goodness. Here they are together. <laughs> So you can see she's bigger, Laura, Laura by, by um, Bonnie Brown and Mia by Iveta Ekertova. I think it's 18 inches, could be 19. And she is 20, I think. Anyway, but you can see they're about the same length. However, his legs are straight. Now they're bent at the hip a little bit right now with the way he's laying and hers are bent pretty significantly. Look at that leg. I just love them. I just love them. Let's put his little hand up too. And they'll both, they'll both be just stretched out. <laughs> Wee. All right, so yeah, he's definitely, and even his face is a little smaller, but look at these two sweet sleepers. I just adore them. I love all my babies, but phenomenal. So blessed. And I think that's all of my rambling on that I've got for tonight. Yeah. Anyway, um, loving these dolls, loving this um, hobby right now, loving the beautiful comments um, from those of you who leave kind comments, and even if you don't comment and you just watch, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. We're going to get our coffee for the evening and um, get on with the rest of the night, but we are sending out lots of love. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.